Welcome to the third hour of American Agenda. I'm Bob Sellers. And I'm Heather Childers. We're now joined by our family of co-hosts, attorney and Republican strategist Amanda Mackey, Project 21 member and former Trump appointee Derek Hawley, and former gunnery sergeant for U.S. Marine Corps and advisory board member for Women for Trump. Trump, Jesse Jane Duff. Welcome to everyone. All right. Some breaking news for you first, folks. We're waiting on President Joe Biden to speak on launching his national effort to fight gun violence in efforts to curb the tide of violent crimes that we're seeing across the country. This comes as officials brace for what could be a turbulent summer of violence as COVID lockdowns are lifting. Now, in Democratic-run city, cities across the country, Atlanta, New York, Portland, Chicago, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, homicides, shootings are up a significant amount. I don't know if we have that graphic. I believe we do compared to last year in New York. Uh, alone, homicides up 13 percent, shooting 64 percent. There's Atlanta, 58 percent. Chicago, always rough, 5 percent higher. We know that's always high. Portland. 533% higher shootings, 126% higher. You can see across the board double digit increases in most locations uh, and triple in Portland. So let's bring in our panel. Uh, Derek, explain to me, if you could, the rationale for the president blaming this on guns and how that approach would change these numbers. Uh, I can't explain that, okay? okay. <laughs> what I can say, it has to do with, all this right now has to do with all this defund the police and all this negative attitude towards the police. I had a conversation just a couple of weeks ago with a, uh, with a Prince, George County police, Prince George's County police officer. He's been on the force for 27 years. He's right outside Washington, D.C., so people He's know. Right outside of Washington, D.C., exactly. He said, Derek, in my 27 career, in my 27 career history as a police officer, this has been the most difficult time ever for me to police individuals. He said, because of the lack of respect, what, what happens when people walk up to them, they, they're cursing at the police officers, they're trying to provoke police officers, there's just absolutely no respect for police officers. And so when you have that, and they can't even lock individuals up or retain them for things that they're doing right now that's just outrageous in terms of crime, there's no wonder that we have this kind of crime going on in these inner cities right now. Because they're looking for a lawsuit, they're looking for a chance to be on TV. And yeah. that's what the police is facing right now. Yeah, and, and it's funny you say that. I was just about to say, Heather, then everybody's got their phone there, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and they're watching the cop. They're kind of daring him or her to do something that they can catch on, on their camera. Yeah. Um, one of the other troubling things I was just reading about what he's expected to, to announce in just a few minutes um, is the repurposing of federal coronavirus relief funding uh, to help communities fight gun violence and for gun violence programs. So I'm wondering how different communities are going to respond to that when there are still so many people who are in need across this country. You're going to take COVID relief monies and then put it towards these programs, right. anti-gun programs. I'll be interested to see how that's going to work. Yeah, and Amanda, what I'm wondering uh, is how do these kinds of programs, I mean, what's going to lessen that what's mm -hmm. going to change that uh putting money into the everybody wants less gun violence but how do you spend money to get that to happen well, that's a great question. I mean, basically what Joe Biden is saying is we're going to create a slush fund to go after rogue gun dealers and to take them out. And we're going to do that so that they are no longer in business. We're going to do that to reduce gun violence. Why don't they just look at what's happening across the country since last summer when these protests really started um, and there's been just lawlessness. They're not being prosecuted. Even the vice president set up a fund to help get these people out of jail, help hire attorneys for them. And so you have this state of lawlessness where people, it's just being okay to do this and, and no one is condemning them. And the leadership of this nation from Joe Biden down, they're not saying anything about what is happening with the perpetrators creating violence. MSNBC is a perfect example. Ali Velshi standing in front of a burning building saying it's been rather peaceful protest here. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really the problem. Jesse yeah. Jane, you're no stranger to guns. Um, explain to me what your approach might be uh, because, you know, I trust you with your guns and for some reason guns are the enemy. Well, why is it we don't see these riots on military bases? Well, 
the answer you just said. We carry weapons. They know there are weapons. And honestly, Chicago, which was one of the cities that was up there, I think Washington, D.C. should have been up there. I know there's been a dramatic increase in the violence in my own community. But when we look at uh, Chicago, for example, the couple that was just recently dragged out of their cars in the Puerto Rican Day mm. celebration yeah, that they had horrible. and murdered right there, had there been any intimidation by those with those guns that they were carrying illegally, that they may have had a concealed carry permit, had that been prominently known throughout the state, such as Arizona, Texas, and other locations where we know people could carry, I guarantee there would not be such an aggressive boldness by these criminals. So Joe Biden isn't talking about uh, reducing crime. He's talking about the capability for people to defend themselves. He thinks that if he makes more laws, rights away people's capacity to conceal carry or even carry for that matter, then it's going to reduce it. It's all a bandage of appearances, but they don't even enforce their own laws in uh, Chicago, for example, and in Los Angeles. The federal gun laws that are on the books for illegal gun carry, they're not even aggressively going after these people. The sentences need to be harsh. They've got to be aggressive. But instead, you have these prosecutors letting people go left and right. Look at New York. They can't even hold them on bail. They go right back out and commit the crimes again. So they're not tough on crime. They're trying to make it tough on guns. That yeah. is just ridiculous. Make it tough on crime. Right. Heather? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and looking at some of the uh, areas that they say this fund Funding will be going toward instead of the COVID relief, including money that was supposed to go towards schools. 122 million of the bill that was set aside for schools. Now that money can be used for summer jobs programs, hiring more police officers, which we just said they don't want to be police officers anymore, and court personnel, spending on gun violence enforcement, paying for more nurses, counselors, and social workers. The counselors and social workers they're going to send to respond to somebody who's crazy with a gun. Like the couple that was pulled out of their car during the Puerto Rico celebration there in the streets and murdered. I don't think that you want to have a social worker respond to that. Yeah, absolutely horrible saying Never that. Never mind the fact that that's not what Congress appropriated the money for. Exactly. So right. you're going to take it away from our schools and the education for our youth, which is what needs to happen, better education, so that they don't end up in the streets. That would be my These opinion. These are the same individuals. These are the same individuals who want to pride themselves on funding public schools, okay? When you start talking about school choice, then it's a Republican issue. Oh, my God, no, no, we can't. School choice, school choice, no. But here's an issue. You're taking money from public schools, these schools who desperately need it for this education right now, and it's just so back ass work. Uh, can I say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> also, the Democratic answer to most problems is spend money on it. That, yeah. and, and typically it does not solve the problem. So you have to, you have to identify the problem to fix it. And uh, we've got cashless bail out there. We have people who are committing crimes and they're out within an hour or two. Mm -hmm. uh, you have people not being penalized. Remember all the criticism that Giuliani got uh, in, in, in New York for the broken window policy, which actually locked people up for being vandals. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, there's a price for what you do and that brought down crime. Funny how that worked, and now nobody's doing it, it seems, certainly not in these cities. Right. It seems like the Biden administration is trying to go the complete and total the opposite way. of what uh, President Biden did at the time, back, what was the 1995, 94 oh, yeah. crime well, bill. <laughs> what was the saying of the 90s right. called, they want their Joe Biden back? Right. Yeah, complete you know, opposite. In, in 94, uh, he was part of the crime bill that a lot of people criticize now, but uh, any of us that were alive back then, and I'll just say you and me, Derek, uh, <laughs> we, we know, no, Amanda, I'm, you're way younger than me. Time. Just Derek and I were there. Uh, but crime was so bad back then, something had to be done. Yeah. That so-called horrible crime bill actually did a lot of good. I'm not saying it was perfect, but something had to be done. Well, and people don't understand that Joe Biden, he authored that bill. Yes, yeah. exactly. He was the author of that That's bill in 94. Yeah. I have to interject on that crime bill. Let's not let's not prop that up. It, it because it dispor disproportionately put African Americans behind prison bars for Fair the enough. same type of whites are doing. So let's not go back to that. But I would say crime, being tough on crime is what he should be talking about. Right yeah. now in California, if you shoplift less than $900, it's not even going to be considered. They're not even going to call the police. So businesses are being driven out of business exactly. because they won't even enforce the laws. Yeah. And I agree with you, Jesse Jane, about uh, the, the, the effect that it had. That's why I say it wasn't perfect. But crime was so bad then, 
people were trying to do something about it, not just say, oh, guns are bad, blame it on the guns. Right. So we'll, we'll leave it there for right now.